<coughs> hey everybody, looks like we are live. Welcome to yet another Wednesday. We made it. I hope everyone is having a good week. Today we will be working on the detail of Eddie Murphy, going in with the background, <coughs> doing some color mixing. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot to learn. Uh, we'll be using uh, Createx and sprinkle in some uh, Createx illustration with some of the Wicked line as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So let's see who we have here. We have Mr. Bobby all the way from Cape Cod. How are you today, sir? We have Color Graphics all the way from Jersey. How's it going? So that's cool. So we don't have too many people here right now. But that's okay. It's uh, Everyone will pretty much uh, make their way in. And that's very exciting. So, yeah. So, uh, when we get into this kind of stage, we do more brush techniques. <coughs> but also, we're working in kind of enriching some of the colors. Maybe increasing the chroma here and there. Uh, that sort of thing. And then coming in with the pencil techniques to really refine maybe come in with the super darks to really bring them now remember dark happens at the very end so that's where you're going to start seeing that i don't use any uh ubo paper or anything like that so i don't have the option to scratch so i will be using something like this which is the orange and white mixture and that allows me to push the colors back to white and then glaze over whatever color I want, which is really cool. So let's see who we have here today. Uh, we have Mr. Steve Leahy, all the way from Ohio. How are you, sir? And we have Brad Mummery, all the way from Manitoba. Great to see you. And we have Raul Antonio, all the way from Jersey. So three Jersey people today so far. So... Uh, Jersey in the house, definitely. So, I'm still getting over this cold, but my voice is almost back. It's just this, uh, scratchy cough that kind of doesn't want to go away. That's the only thing that is really... And so, Steve says he's starting to build up his paint supply collection again and was thinking of me. Oh, very cool. Oil paint, definitely. So... Yeah, let me know. Uh, I have some new research uh, that I can share with you there, Steve, on, you know, what the hottest brands are, why, what brands are kind of ebbing, and one, what brands are flowing. So, um, yeah, so definitely we'll touch base on that, uh, you know, as far as what brand and, you know. One thing I want you to get, which you haven't gotten because this is relatively new, is instead of linseed oil, instead of liquid, I really recommend this solvent-free gel by Gamblin. It has no smell. It, uh, it just really thins the paint just exactly the way you want it, very gradually. <coughs> and I can't imagine painting without this stuff. So definitely pick you up a this you're gonna really love it so definitely that's a that's a real win so uh so i'm looking forward to uh hearing about your oil paint collection that's great uh oh so steve says he needs to re reduce himself on the mediums <laughs> yeah uh yeah the, the mediums are really bad because a lot of them are super toxic but that one isn't so that's that's good to know what I'm going to do now is I have this little, uh, I have this little like water spot and those who airbrush all the time know that that happens from God knows what, but you know, that means I have to paint the background. Mr. Dave, how's it going, sir? Great to see you. You're in Illinois. Oh man, that is so cool. Are you near Chicago, Dave? So... Uh, so you do quite a bit of traveling along the Midwest, huh, Dave? So uh, how do you like it? Do you like the traveling? Uh, do you get to go to any art museums or anything like that? Or is it just, you know, pretty much time allocated to work? So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to cover this. 
uh, best I can. Now, always notice that when we have the, what, well, let me come back here. When we have the, uh, the shield, it quite, doesn't quite fit towards the end of the painting. And why that happens, we just paint and we don't always adhere to the shield. Or maybe the shield shrinks, you know? Moline, a couple hours away from Chicago. Very cool. Very, very cool. So, uh, how's the weather there? Because here in the Northeast, it's been really super nice. Uh, have you been getting good weather over there in, near Chicago, sir? I think yesterday it got up to 80 here in the city. <coughs> which is crazy. So now we're going to cover the best we can because it did change. And let's see. So the important thing is to make sure that we go ahead and go right on the edge because we don't want underspray, which is good. Yeah, I'm really enjoying uh, oil painting over the airbrush underpainting, Steve. It seems like it's just such a recipe for having, you know, good experiences with oil paint. It really is. And so Dave says a little bit cool. So that's that's not too bad. I would take a little bit cool and a little bit hot any day. That's for sure. <coughs> and sorry for the cough, guys. It's the one thing that's lingering. Everything else is pretty much gone. It's just the cough that is really... Oh, yeah, the smell. My favorite smell in the world, out of all the paints, takes me back to when I was 14 and I got my first set of oil paints. And it's this company, if I can find it. But just, it's so great. And it has, it has a, its own unique smell. So here it is, uh, Grumbacher pre-tested. It just has this, like, I don't know smell of like what oil paint should smell like you know it's just really great so the other brands are good but i like grumbacher just for the smell alone miss mrs colette how are you all the way from wisconsin so great to see you how are you today i'm so glad you're here <coughs> i got some water and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix this background and redo it. So let's see how that goes. And so, how I have to go to, I'm gonna actually, let's see here. I'm gonna see how this goes. Okay, so I'm isolating the color. I have the color. And now we find out the composition of the color. And that's just going to be a couple of seconds. And this is real time how I find the color with my color method. Okay. And then we are going to... Oh, I see what's happening here. Okay. So. Very interesting color. Very interesting color. And let's see. So let's go ahead and mix that. And then we're going to mix a lot of it because we have to do the whole background. So let me get one of my cups here. And we're going to do a combination of, of uh, Wicked Illustration and Wicked Detail. Wicked il uh, Illustration and Wicked Detail. We're going to do a combination. So what we'll do... And so, yeah, look at that. So that is, okay, so let me get the uh, ratio. The only thing is my paperwork, where is it? <coughs> okay, so. If you were my paperwork, where would you be? You would be right over here. Okay. So we're looking at... 
Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna mix it. Okay. And then we are going to get some detail scarlet, I think. No, nope, I'm going to go with Okay, let's see. And we'll do one drop. And there's this guy. And let's see what we have. I just have to find my stirrer. Oh, yes, definitely a great group tonight, that's for sure. And let's see what we have. Very close. Very close. I think it's a little on the darker side. So we'll just lighten that up a tad. No problem. And then we'll 4011 it. So let's see. Let's get my 50 50 illustration white. And let's go ahead and make this happen. Now, the thing is, you don't want to thin it out too much because then you, you run into different problems. I may lighten that up just a bit more. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, so I'm liking this, and we're going to put this through our airbrush. <coughs> and we're going to put it into 105 because that's a bigger cup. And since it has white in it, we're definitely going to do this. See that? Move this over to the side. I'm being super neat, guys. Super, super neat. And let's see. Put our cup on. And here goes nothing. Let's see what we have. Yeah, this is actually really nice on the money color. And I'm not going to try and cover it all at once. That would be counterproductive. Just do one coat, come back, let it dry. And if you see something is really wet on the surface, just blow some air on it. And notice I put paper down to save my, my board. Getting a little bit of tip dry, get little specks of white, and that happens. And if you see if sometimes the paint will actually stay on the surface, that's when you just have to dry it with the air. You have to help it along, you know. So it's great to see everyone tonight. Thank you so much for hanging with me. I appreciate that so much. And we'll let that dry. And we have the formula so we can make the color again. Oh, 
I'm about six to seven inches. You want to be a little further away because if you're not, you're going to get you're going to get some pretty pretty blotchy color. And just help it dry. And this is not like Rome's not going to be built in one day, right? We're going to have to uh, <coughs> we're going to have to go over this several times. About seven inches away, nice and smooth. And again, my surface is on color line paper by Canson. I did a underpainting in India ink, and then uh, I went ahead and shellacked it. And then on top of the India ink, I did a. Uh, I went ahead and went in with a combination of Createx Wicked Paint and Illustration. We're getting there, guys. And you just may have to help this out. So the fact that I shellacked it really lets it uh, receive unlimited. You notice how it's not buckling or anything. <coughs> it's almost like working on a very thin piece of wood. And away for that to dry, there's a little piece of hair there. I just noticed. I'm going over where the droplet is, trying to even it out with what's around it. We'll see how that goes. Make sure we don't have any tip dry happening. And now I could see if I can get that hair. Oh, there it is, right on the surface. So it didn't cause a problem. So that's good, which is fantastic. Again, seven inches away. Okay. Give it one more time. Just to get a nice edge here. All right, let's throw some air on there, and then we'll see how Eddie looks here. All right, let's take a look. We'll put it over, the magnet's over here. See how this goes. We should have a nice vibrancy. Sure. 
should, right? <coughs> okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I have to say I'm happy with that. Nice, nice, even, even value. Just right here, it's that little watermark. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try and paint right on that watermark. See if that helps. It's helping. So yeah, so I'll continue doing that until it's gone. So basically, just the edges I have to work on there. So let's take a look. Let's see how good or bad it looks. <coughs> let's see. Okay, so I do like it. I do like the color, and I do like how even it came out, which is really good. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. I don't think we need this anymore. And let's see. Put this out. And then this one here, we'll put over here. Here in good shape, I think. All right. Oh, thank you. Colette says it looks great. I appreciate that so much. I love the edge. I thought we were going to have a hurting edge over here, but it really seemed to come together, which is I'm very thankful for. So let's go ahead and bring Eddie over, and let's get rid of me here. Let's see. We don't need to see me anymore. Okay. <coughs> So now we're going to go ahead and see what our game plan is for today, for this evening. And we want to start bringing things together, right? So we're going to come in with some deeper darks, I think. So looking at Eddie here, there's this really rich, beautiful, kind of wonderful brown color. And let's see. And so we're going to go get that color. Let's see, right here. Okay, right about there. Okay, let's see what we have here. Now this is going to be a nice rich dark that we're going to be using. So let me go ahead and figure out what this color is. Okay, so we know that. We know this. Here. Okay, so looking at this, I see how to get that color. So let's go ahead and make that happen. <coughs> and we're going to start with our main color. And I think we're going to go with uh, illustration with this particular color. And so, yeah, so I do see what's happening here. And let's see, here we go. So when we look at this, it is okay. Great, let's make this happen. So we're going to do Part one is done, and now we'll get other color. Mr. Dwayne, how's it going, my friend? Good to see you. San Luis de Obispo. How's everything, my friend? Always a pleasure. Okay, three times six, and two times six, twelve. Okay, here goes nothing, guys. So 
let's see if our calculations are correct. I hope so. So it's so good to see you, Mr. Dwayne. You guys are great, guys and girls. I know we'll see Patty soon. Okay, so we're looking pretty close, but I think it could be just a tad more warm. So let's make that happen. So <coughs> I'm actually going to add a little bit of a bit of detail in there, because why not? It's a nice thin uh, premix colors I have here, and I think that would work well. So I've been pre-mixing my colors, so I'm not really going straight out of the bottle too often. So when we're looking at this, it's a little on the purple side. So I'm going to add more red because I don't want it on the purple side. So when it's on the purple side, it's going towards blue, right? So you want to go the opposite direction of the color wheel to bring it back to where you are. See, now it's still blue. So when this happens, you just tell yourself, okay, you just have to start over. And that's okay because it might have been a miscalculation here or there. So <coughs> let's begin again. And it only takes a second. I'd rather you begin again than create, you know, a gallon of paint that isn't what you're looking for. Okay, now we'll get another color. If first you don't succeed, you try, try again. Let's see if this is better, hopefully. Right now, I can definitely tell it's not the purple. So once it went to purple, could have been one element that was off. Okay. Something is amiss because... I'm getting purple when I shouldn't, and I'm not sure what is, you know, maybe it's because I was using illustration violet, and that wasn't the color that I wanted. Isn't that funny? You know, I'm like, wait a minute, the calculation should work, and it was like I was using illustration violet. Oh, my God. I'm rethinking my color theory. I'm like, oh, this is wrong. I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. And all that. Now that's some funny stuff right there. So for some reason I can't locate my violet. And I picked up. I can't locate the color I'm looking for. So that's some funny stuff right there. Let me go ahead and wash my hands. Yeah, so my new color theory is like really on the money. And I've been testing it like six hours a day, trying to find the holes. And I guess the biggest hole is if you pick up the wrong color, then that's going to be the biggest hole. So let's see. All right. Go back to our fixture again. Do it away from my painting. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, why is it purple? I don't understand. That should not be purple. Now we're going to go ahead and put more water in. Let's see what we have.
Now we're getting close to what we're looking for. That's actually the color. So it's important to have the right colors when you mix it. So that's exactly the color. That should have happened in 45 seconds, not in long time as it took. Because mixing violet, I was getting these violet colors, and it was just quite bizarre. Hey there, how's it going, Mr. Travis, all the way from the Minnesota area? How are you, sir? We're going to get the other airbrush, and we're going to load this. First, we're going to make sure our airbrush is working correctly. Put this over here. <coughs> and we're going to get our test paper. Let's see. Here's our Mac towel. See that rich brown? That's what I was looking for. That's exactly the color. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do what we were supposed to do. And let me come over here. Okay, I'll zoom in for you. So you see how that's like really light? Not what we're looking for. We need to add some real beautiful dark browns. Beautiful. And then over here nasal labial fold and a little bit here at the depressor angle oris and if I want it softer I just re increase my distance you know that's that's what's really important when we're doing this okay and let's make sure I'm getting the spray I want <coughs> Okay, I'm pretty, not 100% happy with it, that's for sure. So we'll see, maybe there's something going on here. Let's see. Okay, I think that solved the issue. All right, so now on the top part of his nostril right over here. We're going to hit that. And this really rich, saturated color we're going to bring into his nose here. And then right up here. There we go. So see that real beautiful, rich color we're introducing. Okay, now it's kind of doing what I want to do it, but you see how we have to introduce these richer tones in here, and that's what we're doing right now. Almost like a glaze, because it's a lighter color underneath, and a glaze only works when the color is lighter underneath. show you what I'm doing. 
kind of introducing some of these really rich colors here. If I want it smoother, I have to make sure I'm a bigger distance away, right? Because you won't get away with being close. You're going to get blotchiness. Now, you may just very well want blotchiness. But if you don't, you should be about 7 inches away. this over. Now we do have some opportunity to erase because there was a little bit of a blotchiness right over here, which <coughs> should be easily fixed. I do say should, but let's take a look. Yeah, so since we're using the illustration colors, we're able to even things out if we need to, which is good. Now this surface is not conducive to, let's say, Upo paper or something like that. So you will have to be a little more reserved in your erasing. And just as if I was oil painting or working in pastels, I build up that color, right? That's what we have to do. We have to build up that color. So right here, it's a little richer. I have it a little bit on the pink side. So let's come in with this rich color right here. See how before, if I was to go with that wrong color, everything would have been on that purple shift. And that would have been no fun for anybody. So always make sure your head's in the game. Not like me tonight. And you can, let's say, go eight inches away and kind of spray the whole thing to unify. That's okay. You can unify colors. Because remember, you're working on a painting. It's not a photograph. So your job is to make a, pleasure, a pleasant image. <coughs> so, hey, Mr. Garcia, how's it going, my friend? So good to see you all the way from New York. How's life treating you, sir? There we go. And again, over here, we can see that we can kind of lighten that up just a bit. Just a tiny bit. And right here on his neck area. Travis says, Tim, he's getting close to trying those inks in some... Uh, in some edges, book edges. Oh, wow, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you're going to love the inks. The control you get is like nothing else, uh, if I don't say so myself. You'll never get the control that you get with the inks than anything else you're going to put through your airbrush. And I'll back that up any day. So I would go against any artist. They could have any paint they want and I would go with my inks and I would go head to head and I would not lose. Guaranteed. And <coughs> because it's just really great. It's just the inks and the consistency are just made for airbrushing, you know? I mean, it's just perfect for it. It really is. So you can see how beautiful those those skin colors are that I just added to Eddie. Now, we were a little bit on the pink side before, but that's okay. We were setting up, right? And that's how you have to look at it. Yeah. 
not where you are that matters. It's where you're going. You should have heard me last week, Chris. Oh, my God. I was a real mess. But I'm getting better. Getting better. <coughs> okay. So, we're going to be looking at here with the zygomatic bone going into the uh, mandible here. And there's a little gap right here. Let's pull this in. There we go. Just darkening this side of the upper and lower eye, eye, eyelids there. And even though it has this really nice kind of unsaturated color, I think we can put some saturation here just to make a better painting. Not necessarily going exactly like the photograph. I'd rather make a better painting. So you might say, well, what is makes a better painting, Tim? Well, learning about that is learning and going to the museums <coughs> and looking at the work of the old masters. And they will let you know what makes a good painting as opposed to being a slavish copy to reality. So, you know, if you look at Caravaggio and what he does with chiaroscuro and the light and dark patterns, or you look at Bouguereau and what he does with grays, or you look at... Um, you know, any of the Impressionists and what they do with, you know, the purples and and the rich, uh, the red violets and everything like that in that spectrum and the blues, that helps you there. So it's not just uh, copying nature. It's, it's actually making a good painting and kind of, you know, by going to museums and getting art books and reading up on you know, what made these artists of the of art history, what made them great, will help us with a direction as to what we can do to hopefully make our paintings great one day. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to unify some of this. So <coughs> I'm going to come in with my orange and white mixture, and I'm going to do it with this airbrush because... The other airbrush has the dark in, so that's cool. And let's see, just gonna empty this. And we're just gonna use good old fashioned water because 411 can get expensive, you know, if you use it to clean your airbrush and everything. So I'm opting to save my 411 for mixing which is good. I may have to go to the sink and get more water. And we will be doing some wet palette techniques, which is going to be fun. Yeah, my Extreme Patriot Arrow is feeling a little weird. I don't know why that is. But as you see, we, we muddled through. But what I want to do is come in with the orange and white mixture and see if I can... Just kind of unify some of this here. <coughs> now with something this red, we might have to go with more of a white color because it already has red in it, orange in it. So we might get away with just straight white, but we'll see together. Let's see how this goes. When you're painting, you just have to <coughs> you just have to keep going, right? You just have to keep moving. Let me see what this does. Okay, so that's giving us a really nice bright white. So I'm happy with that. But you see it's an orange and white mixture. So the mixture I have here is 20 drops of 5050 illustration white and two drops of illustration orange. So that should uh, help you guys as to, you know, how to make your own mixture. 
but you're going to have to, uh, you're definitely going to have to adjust, right? Let's come over here. So I'm going to pump the trigger from about five inches away because I want to create some of the lights, but I do not want to, to create too much blotchiness. Now, <coughs> in this area where I want to unify the color, I really just want to dust it ever so lightly. So I'm going to be about eight inches away. And I'm just going to dust this so it becomes more like unified skin. Now over here we have that rich color. We can bring that in and kind of work back and forth. This is how you do portraits. You don't want to just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to hit it with this color and then I'm going to hit it with that color and I'm just going to go about my business and be just fine. It doesn't work that way. You have to build layer upon layer and build that skin texture. It doesn't happen by just mixing the right color. That's more for objects, but that doesn't work for skin. So when you see some artists uh, like Estes and those guys, the quote unquote photorealists from the 80s and 70s, they're great, but their people came out really dead because you can't paint people in that same way of just you know, I'm just going to find the color, put it there, and move on and go on my very way. It doesn't work that way. People are much more complex. You have blood, and you have bones underneath, and there's translucency, and all those different things you don't deal with if, you let's say, you're painting a salt shaker. Uh, you're not dealing with that. You are dealing with color and hue and all that, but you're definitely not dealing with the intangible of painting a person. I guess that's why I always wanted to paint a person because of the intangibles, right? Uh, you know, what makes someone look like someone? What gives the character of someone? Harvey Dinnerstein once said to me, this is really true. And I remember this verbatim, and this was many years ago. And he says, when you're painting a person, you want to find out what makes them common with other men other people and then also find out what makes them individual what makes them what what features that only they have so find the humanity of the person but also find the caricature of the person at the same time and he also said that you want to when you're painting you want to look at whatever you're painting like you're looking at the world for the last time that kind of urgency and that's you know when you think about that it's far more beautiful and poetic than just going through the motions and copying what you see. It is poetic, you know, our eyes and how it, you know, how we, we, we receive the light and how color is interacting with other colors. It's far more poetic than, than just painting. And I think when we're painting people, it's even more poetic because you're, it's the humanity. It's what connects us. And I think that is so, so crucial. And I, that's really why I became a portrait painter. Because I want to capture who that person is. Even if I don't know them. I can have, you can have an impression of somebody, can't you? You know, hey, that's a really nice guy. That's, that's, that seems like a very sweet woman. Or something like that. So, yeah, it's. It's not a salt shaker, and so it's a little bit deeper. It's almost like psychic, you know? There's like a psychic quality to it, and I hope that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, so you see how I'm building up the skin tones. And that's crucial, you know, keep building them up. You know, we went in with the mid-tones. Now we're coming back in with the whites. We're going to come back in with the mid-tones and come back in with the whites. And then we'll come in with the dark. Keep going back and forth until you arrive at that that special, uh, I don't know, that, that, that special recipe that just, and, you know, we call it surface quality, right? We get that surface texture. Whatever that is, you just know you have it when you have it. And so that's what we're looking for. So 
from pumping that trigger, just trying to get a little bit of the skin texture right there. I'm going to go closer because I'm, I'm hitting that highlight in the nose there. Right there, that light right there underneath his chin. And of course, this is the orange-white mixture. And you can see just how bright that is. And you might say, hey, Tim, that's too bright. And I'll be like, right back at you. But what we're going to do is we're setting up to come in with the darker color. You have to break things sometimes to fix them. So notice when things are a little too, too much, we have the white just to kind of assimilate that into the rest of the forms. And stick with it. All right, now we're going to go back in with that fleshy color and keep going back and forth. See how going back and forth we're getting a we're getting that kind of surface texture and we're not like we're not saying we're gonna do this it's just gonna happen that surface texture you're just gonna arrive trust me see how we are here we're running low so that's probably a problem so let's go ahead and put so look what happened when I accidentally picked up violet. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's funny because violet, you know, when colors are in their bottle form, they look like each other. Like ultramarine blue will look like violet, will look like black because they're in the bottle and they're so intense. Okay, feeling good about this. A little pinky over here. So let's dust it. Has anyone ever seen the movie Basquiat? Really good. Really fan. Gary Oldman's in it. Uh, David Bowie. Dennis Hopper. Incredible cast. <coughs> uh, am I still on? Because I haven't had anybody say anything for a while. Unless everyone's just kind of chill tonight. But I don't, I don't see anyone. Normally, you guys are talking and exchanging ideas. Everything okay out there, guys? We're going to come back in with the depressor angle light auris, bring that down. And see how light I came over here. So someone out there, just say a comment so I know you guys are out there. It's not uh, that something is not broken here. Let me see. Because it is a little bit odd let's see I'm gonna go and play this on my own here see how this sounds oh okay you guys are good I'm just making sure that we were we were working thanks guys I appreciate it that's oh, the, okay. you guys are good. I just making very cool very cool as you guys were so I'm glad you guys are here and everything's working that's all I needed to know thanks guys 
And let's see. So I'm just going to continue and just darkening this area above the lips. Let's make that happen. See how it just falls into place when you're not worried, right? And then right here on his, uh, maybe it was a little bit lighter. Okay, let's come over here. Your painting will dictate when it's done. So you definitely, uh, you definitely want to <coughs> continue to uh, continue working without having that. Yeah, you have the painting ending, right? You have that in the back of your mind, but you don't want it to be your decision maker. You want to basically let the organic growth happen. So here, it's too dark. So you see how this right here is way too light? So let's say you wanted to fix it. You can't go over a dark color with, with color to make it lighter. You can't do that. So you have to come in with this orange and white mixture. And you have to fix it that way. And then you glaze over it with a darker color most likely a transparent and those are things I learned from oil painting or learned from oil painting so we're just lightening this up and then we're going to come in with a uh, kind of a mid-tone orange and that's right Colette I let you guys know when it's done that's funny and then eventually you guys know when it's done there we go see how I'm constantly going back and forth with the orange and white mixture and with the with the skin tones I keep doing that until I have a really beautiful unified skin you know of one just like one organism okay here it's we're just gonna lighten that up so now that looks like looks crazy that's okay because we have to break it to fix it right so we broke it now let's fix it okay and now we're bringing it back but the difference is now it has color. It's not this dead black color that we had. And there was no way we would be able to fix that dead black color by glazing because you can't glaze over a dark color. It doesn't work. You can scumble, but you can't scumble an airbrush unless you're doing a paintbrush technique. And just like everything else, <coughs> When you want to have a lighter application of a color, you're just going to be further away, right? And still the one second rule is in effect. And now that ear is looking a lot better than it did before.
Okay, so we have our orange and white mixture. Let's work on the forehead. And there's no shortcut here. You know, you're, you're going to have to continue working until you get that surface texture you're looking for. Now we are going to come in with paintbrush techniques, but right now what we're doing <coughs> works best in airbrush. Now I'm going to dust over everything here because we want unification, right? So I'm going to dust this white mixture even over the skin tones. And then I'm going to come back over here. So like right here, there's more going on than just that value. So I'm going to have to come in with the, with the white mixture to assimilate those colors. have this nice nice highlight right there Now I'm just going to come back and so everything is very loose right now. It's not very tight. That's where the, the paintbrush techniques will come in. A little bit lighter here. Just as if I was <coughs> working on my India ink painting. Just going back and forth. Lightening, darkening, shapening with the skin tone that I have. Eight inches away. I'm just going to dust that area that I worked on. We're going to define the, uh, the retro obicularis oculi fat pad above the eyebrow. <coughs> Just lightening that up right there. in with this color back and forth so my new color theory is really going to change the way you mix color and that is that is not an empty promise this is something that I've been perfecting for the past six months and I've been actually running through it. So <coughs> what I'm doing now, and I have a control group of artists who are using it, and it's foolproof. And how fast you mix colors is just unbelievable. And how little colors you use and how little colors you need is really amazing. 
and it works in acrylic, it works in oils, and it works in airbrush. So it's it's really pretty wild stuff. Okay, so now we're going to come in with some uh, paintbrush techniques and see if we could kind of uh, do some definition on Eddie's face here. Let's move this over. We need room for the wet palette. Okay. Right here comes the wet palette. The same when you're working with the wet palette, the same techniques for mixing color are the same, not changing one bit. Okay. Still wet. And let me go get some water. I'll be right back, guys. Oy. All right, so I'm just going to wait for my kettle to boil, and while that's happening, I'll re-wet my wet palette a little bit here. Let's see. Just a little bit, especially on the ends there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to come in with some of the rich darks uh, around Eddie's eyes and everything, so... Uh, I could use basically uh, the color that I was using, and let's start with that, and I'll get my small paintbrush I've been working on the last couple of days. If I can find it, maybe it fell. And while I'm at it, I'm going to get a cloth drop. Here we go. Okay. Let's make this happen, guys. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in on on his eyes and we'll go to town with that. Let's see. Okay, great. And we're going to do a little bit of a dry brush technique here. It's going to look really dark when it's wet, but when it dries, it'll look normal. So thank you everybody for hanging out. I appreciate it. It's always great to see everybody. You know, there's a lot of things going on on Wednesday nights, and I'm always really touched when you guys spend time with me. So thank you so much. Great. Okay. So 
pretty happy with this for now. And let's, whatever we do on one eye, right, we have to do on the other eye. So over here. Same thing. Now notice that in the shadow uh, area, the values are usually more compressed, meaning the values are more alike to one another. There's less contrast, I should say. Could have been just a little hint of an eyelash right there. And you see how it's transparent? Transparent just doesn't work. So we're going to have to come in with an opaque later because we don't want to see the transparency there. So there's a lot of things involved with painting you know, opaque and transparent, when to use them are so important. And, you know, it will dry and look normal. So there's this really weird, well, not say weird, but very interesting eye color, right? So let's see how we can mix that eye color. Let's do that together. Well, I can't do it together because it's part of the course, but let's see if I could, we can go ahead and find it. So right here we have a light and a mid-tone. We're going to hit the light first, and then we're going to find the color now. And it's crazy because when you really have a system for mixing color, you're going to be so surprised that that's the color, right? You're going to be like, there's no way that's the color. But then when you, that's why you have to test the system, that's why you have to trust the system, whatever system you're working to mix colors. Okay, so we can see. Exactly what's happening here. Okay. Definitely see what's happening. All right, so now I have to find that color. So we're going to look. And there we go. Let's see if we can make this happen, guys. Yep, I think that's it. Yeah, I'm not picking up violet this time. Okay. And our color... Our main color is a little bizarre, but we have to trust. We have to trust the system. Because you look at Eddie, he looks pretty good as far as color goes. And throughout this painting, there has been no color that I didn't use this system. So as if I was going in blind, you know, since the painting, since I was 15 years old, I put all that on the back burner to work on this system, to test this system. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our painting of Eddie here. All right, so we're looking at this skin, this uh, eye color here. Let me get my pure ref. Now that color 
If you knew how dark that color was, you would freak out. And I'm just going to come back in with that darker color for the eyes. Just that a bit. There we go. So yeah, look at the, the color of the white of that eye. It's pretty cool. Oh, so Dave says, not always, just lately, it seems. Oh, I know how that gets during the busy seasons, right, Mr. Gregory? So, definitely. So, I admire what you do, work so hard for your family and everything. I mean, that's very admirable, sir. And you can see that that's not quite white what we're putting there. Actually, it's a pretty dark gray. And since it's a greenish gray, too, there's like a Kelly green in there, which is quite fascinating. Yeah, so don't forget, you know, how hard you're working and, and that you're taking care of business because we can forget and just get, you know, wrapped up into working and just forget the importance that we're doing and handling very important business which is the business of taking care of your family okay so now we're going to use our color picker method and and we're going to find exactly what we can do here so we have to pick and find that color how do we do that right how do you find that color and you know you just you just have to Go and buy my course because that's the only way you're going to get that color as quickly as possible. There's no other way out there that's going to be as fast. And I know that sounds like a bold statement, but it just is what it is. So we got to go with a darker brown than what we have on the outside of his eyes, right? It, we can't get away with that. So I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and make it. Wow, that's a super dark color. No kidding. And, and goes in line with exactly what's happening uh, with here. So let me go ahead and uh, make that happen. So I'm going to get that color. Make sure it's not violet. Violet's a wonderful color, but not when you're not looking for it. So with my color method, you can literally find the colors within seconds, not minutes, seconds. As you get better, you're going to know the system so well that you're going to actually get it before seconds. I mean, before like 10 seconds sometimes. There's not a way to mix color like this on the planet. And, you know, I waited until I was able to say this because that's a bold statement. But those who are in the control group right now, they will, con they will concur that within seconds you will get colors. Uh, you, will, you will match the colors within seconds. They will concur with that. So it's not just me making these bold statements. It's that the control group, and this is... This is an industry disruptor, and I have to say, uh, you know, so now, you know, all the bugs are out of it, and now it's just time to roll it out. And it's not going to be cheap. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be cheap because it's going to be transformative. It's going to transform the way you paint. And so... If it was just something that was going to help you, you know, it's like, it's, this is going to be really helpful. Gee, thanks, Tim. That was helpful. 
No, it's going to change the way you paint, what you choose to paint, how fast you paint. Uh, it's just, it's just going to be so beautiful. And, uh, and that's why I'm excited because it's going to help people in airbrush, in oil paint, in acrylic, in pastel. It's going to help everything down the line. And is there anything close to it out there? Is this derivative from anything that has been done before? Absolutely not. It's totally new. And uh, quite frankly, it scares me how new it is, how different it is. But I'm not afraid to make bold claims because over the past, I would say, six weeks, I tried to break it. I tried to do things that would make the color method not work. So many different things I tried. And the more I tried, the more that it just worked. And then I tried it head to head with every other color system out there. And literally, it doesn't have a rival. It literally doesn't have a rival. Colette says, as an artist that does airbrush and oils, you will be beyond dazzled by Tim's new color theory. For years she mixed mud with oils and have not mixed a single color with Tim's and have not missed a single color with Tim's approach. It works. Thank you. At all levels, it's going to change what you paint, how you paint, and how quickly you paint. It's really going to be an eye opener. So, you know, uh, I have a lot of work to do to continue to get it to the place where it's going to be uh, the online course where you're going to be taking it. And it's not going to be like, you know, you're doing an online course of, of a picture. You're going to get a method. You're going to get something that is truly modern and truly different. And so that's why I'm very confident. And the reason why it's not going to be an inexpensive thing is because it's revolutionary. And when it's revolutionary, uh, you know, it's, it's going to transform. So it's going to take, it's going to take what you do and change it. And there's nothing you can do about it because once you learn this, you can't go back. You literally cannot go back once you learn this new technique. Whatever way you're doing, whoever you're, you're working on as far as color theory, you won't be able to go back. Especially in oils. There's just, forget it. Uh, there would just be no way. Okay, so I want to get the curve of his lips. I don't quite have it, so I'm going to mix that color. I'm not going to do it with airbrush. I'm going to do it with, with paintbrush. And let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and uh, make this happen here. We got to get his uh, lip color. All right. I think it's the color we already have. Believe it or not, I think it's the same as his skin tone, but let's see. Yeah, it's so close. We're going to use the skin tone for it. A lot of times when you're working on a portrait, you'll find that the colors throughout the portrait are eerily similar that with us you know what we have in our lips is very close to maybe the blush in our you know malar fat in our cheeks those are things that you know are you know really eye-opening when you experience that okay so let's see i wasn't quite liking the shape of eddie's lips so let's see if we can Fix this. Let's see. I don't want to go too dark, so I may have to dry brush this a little bit.
go. So I have kind of the dark area of his lips, and I think that is pretty successful. And now we're just going to look and see. Here. Let's see. So only seven people on tonight. Must be, uh, you know, maybe something on Netflix or something. I don't know what's happening, but that's all cool. The show must go on. So let's see here. I'm going to get that lighter color in his lips. So let's see. There's a slight kind of opaque kind of color in his lips. Let's see if we can make this happen here. Love this color. It's such a beautiful color. It's a very subtle color nonetheless. Let's see if we can get that. And a lot of times you won't believe the color, so you just double check it to make sure that that's the color you're looking for. And that's it, you know. You just don't believe it. Okay. Okay. Okay, and let's double check the formula. All right, so now I know the formula, we're good, and let's make this happen. I'm gonna do this in some of my pre-mixed uh, Wicked colors. Gotta love the pre-mixed Wicked colors that I put in these little bottles. Here we go, Wicked, Detail Wicked Orange. Three to one with 4011 in here. There we go. Now, okay, so we want a different color here. Let's see. Okay, this might, no, let's go with this one here. There we go. Let's throw. Caution out to the wind here. Okay. So remember, when you're mixing a color, there's three things. Hue, saturation, and value. So the hue, it can only be in one spot at a time. You can't have you, hue in different spots. So you can only have you in one spot. Saturation is how much of that color in its purest state are you going to be using, right? How much is needed, and then value, just how dark it is, how dark or light it is on the grayscale. And if you get those three things right, you're going to be okay. All right, let's see if we got it correct. So right here. We have it correct, but I think we need to add some 4050 to it because it's a little weak. So maybe we can put some body to it. What do you guys think? Let's see. If you were 4050, where would you be? Let's see. So far, no 4050.
must be up here, the last door I checked. And there it is, the last door I checked. Perfect. So we're going to add some 4050s. Sometimes, right, Dwayne, you got to break out the 4050. Just way too watery. But that's the exact color we need. Not bad. I think we restored his face, which is very good. And let's see here. Let me go and just see how we're doing. Let's play this. see here I think we just have a real wicked delay here tonight I don't know what's happening let's see okay that's pretty good <coughs> everything's looks like it's going okay let's see okay let's continue working this light here in his lips All right, so we have the lips down, and let's see what else we can do. So we have that nice dark color that we were working with before. Let's see if we can kind of work in some of the muscles, like the Proceris and the corrugated supinator on both sides here. He has a crown, you know, so we're going to go ahead and try putting that in, and we'll use this brown color that we have, and... Let's see what happens. It's a little bit more powerful. I don't want to go too crazy. Try and be as, with the brush, still have like a transparency to it. And this is a great time to go ahead and put in some of the lines on his frontalis muscle. Ah, oh, Brad, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. And uh, always appreciate hanging out with you and the friendship and uh it's just amazing watching you grow as a painter over the last couple of years it's been an honor there mr brad thank you so much my friend see now i'm bringing in a little bit of definition everything is super soft that's why just working with the airbrush is really doing a disservice uh, you really need to, <coughs> not need to, but it's nice to have the, the different elements, you know, which is really great. Just pull in some of these lines here. 
and they'll dry a lot lighter. If not, we'll just calm them down with the orange mixture, and then we could work on defining the uh, nasal labial fold over here. And we'll zoom back out. We'll define here the, the nostril. And then this nostril right here. And then we'll come in with his hair on his head and his mustache. <coughs> that will work out really nicely. And it's nice to get that definition, definitely. We'll change this to that nice brown color and kind of get that outward arch <coughs> of his upper lip, which seems to be eluding me for some reason. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we could come in with that really nice uh, light color here and see if we can start, you know, uh, maybe molding some of the lights in his skin. You know, it may seem boring, but doing it correctly usually is. And so you have to make sure that you don't rush it. You know, it's not something that we can just say, you know what, this is taking long enough, I just want it done. It it can't. You have to you have to really 
really be ginger about this. over so now not only am I coming in with the lights but I'm also starting to shape some of the muscles in his face and the fat pads and and the <coughs> and the bone And the great thing about this, this kind of uh, orange and white mixture, if you put less pressure, it's going to just lighten up that value. So it's really great for something like this, getting into this. That's why it's very similar to at this stage when I usually come in <coughs> with the white pastel. This is very similar to that. Eerily similar into, you know, what it does and its effectiveness. So when I'm working on this, I'm thinking of the work of Jean-Léon Jerome, which is a mid to late 19th century French painter. And uh, so I'm kind of thinking he would do a lot of paintings of Middle Eastern gentlemen, you know. And, uh, <coughs> and his pose of Eddie Murphy and the skin tone kind of brings me to that. So I'm kind of thinking about Jerome as I'm working here. That's what I'm saying is take your 
to work to that next level by elevating it to something that the old masters have done, to be inspired by them. It's like a musician being inspired by Mozart, you know? Same difference. And there's there's a lot to go, you know, but we're just gonna we're just going to stick with it and and not get involved in whether or not it's finished or whatever, how long it's gonna take. We're just going to we're just gonna let it exper- let it breathe, you know. Of course, that doesn't work when you have tight details. That's different. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff, but. if it's a fine art piece and it's you know your only intention is to you know create something aesthetically pleasing and you don't care what time it is what time how long it takes then you're just going to let it breathe okay but notice the whole thing I'm using that orange and white mixture So you don't see anything going on. Uh, You don't see any of that orange. It's just translating as white. going to build up the light that's on the orbicularis auris and you see just like snow when it's on a roof whatever is facing the storm <coughs> is going to get the most snow or the snow drift right so that's exactly what's happening in the white of of the orbicularis auris right here on the light side Let's build this up. And that's a little too strong, so I just take my finger and calm that down. And just see where the buildup is, right? And you need to do the dry brush, otherwise you're not going to have the control. So. You need the the dry brush for that. (coughs) There's a nice hard edge right here. Then right in between the nasal labial fold and the uh, nostril, wing of the nostril that's a really pretty important telltale feature there you get that and then all of a sudden he starts looking even more three-dimensional (coughs) so by no means are we close to done right but the thing is we're starting getting we're starting to get into some of the particulars of this portrait. And just keep that whole one second rule in mind, right? That's important. We'll go back to regular size. So you can see how he's coming out. So you see, see how he's starting to really, 
kind of take shape, which is nice. There's two ways to do it. You can do it with the brush. You can do it with the airbrush. You know, I don't think any way is really right or wrong. Just whatever you feel most comfortable with. So again, right now, I'm kind of accentuating the procerus muscle. <coughs> and the uh, corrugated super cilli right here. Oh, wow, there's uh, hardly anybody watching tonight. That's a bummer. Okay. But the thing is, show always goes on, guys. Doesn't matter. I'll do this if nobody shows up. Now, with every bit of, like, if you see a shadow... Or, or a crease, there's always a corresponding light. So you want to put that in. Okay. Let's see. Uh, thanks, Raul. I appreciate that. That's cool. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate you, and I appreciate you, Bobby and Raul. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you know, I'll be here regardless. Been doing this since 2008, you know, and it has to be a labor of love, right, guys? It really does. Uh, that's what the thing is. So we have seven minutes, and I always try to give you guys the full two hours. So make sure that I go to 11.30. Oh, okay. So here on her on his forehead, we can definitely come in up here. Oh, so here's a fun part. We can actually work on the highlight on his eye back here. Kind of bring some life into the portrait a little bit. Whoa, that's super bright, right? So I'm just going to tap it with my finger. That's a technique. And you can just kind of calm that down. <laughs> now, there isn't a catch light in this eye, but that's a problem. So, because when there's not a catch light, that's a failure of the photographer because you always, as Colette was a, is a portrait photographer, you always want to have the catch light in both eyes, not one eye, because that's weird. And especially in the being a photographer, especially the eye closest to you, the dominant eye, not to have a catch light. So this is where, you know, we're not going to be slavishly copying our photographs, but we're... We're doing it with, you know, an educated eye, no pun intended. And we're going to put that catch light there as well. Just makes for a better painting. And, you know, so definitely just because it doesn't have a catch light doesn't mean that the photographer didn't screw up. Now, if anyone would say, well, the photographer didn't want a catch light. No, no, that's not good photography. So, you know, if you have the catch light here, he had the angle of the, of either the secondary flash <coughs> or the primary flash. Uh, it was just obscured in this eye. That's all that means.
but thank you the uh, for those who hung out with me tonight. I appreciate you all more than you know. I mean, just thank you for for sticking with me and and hanging out and you know it's really cool of you. I I definitely want you to know that I appreciate you very very much. Uh, thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that, sir. And we'll work on the obicularis oris down here, and that will help to describe the uh, the depressa ankylai oris coming from the corner of his mouth, going down. Depressa anguli oris. So depressa means down, anguli means angle, oris, oris means mouth. So this is the muscle <coughs> that pulls the mouth down. So depressa anguli oris. It's a lot easier once you start understanding what the Latin is to understand the muscles in the face. I mean, it really does work, you know. Take care, Brad. Always a pleasure, my friend. So we got two more minutes left. And really enjoying painting Eddie Murphy. He was such a big favorite of mine growing up on Saturday Night Live. You guys ever remember Mr. Robertson's Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood? That was too funny. Oh my God. Just gonna pull this around here so for this to work his lips come down right here and that kind of uh, just very lightly showing the lips just a little bit lighter than what's around it really helps in describing his face oh yeah he was he is awesome right Bobby it's it's just so great such an amazing comedian. And I remember in high school watching Beverly Hills Cop. That was so great. And again, you want to dry brush it. You don't want to come in too wet because that would, you won't have the control, right? So you want to come in uh, with the dry brushing. So it's <coughs> very similar to painting in pastel, you know, when you do the dry brushing, which I love. And that's why I always recommend having different uh different past you know different mediums because you can borrow from one medium to bring something new something new in the technique which is great okay guys we are at 11:30 so this is <coughs> pretty much way <laughs> excuse me <coughs> i made it and so thank you guys. Thank you, Brad, for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Everyone, I hope you have a great night. Take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. And I think I'm going to be working on Eddie. We might be finishing him up next week, but I'm not sure. Oh, Bobby says that his pencil came in the paper. That is fantastic. That is great. Thanks, guys. Have a great night and thanks for hanging out you all take care okay and i will talk to you very soon and let's see if i could uh
pull this up here. Let's see. 